right here for as long as it takes. If I take that off, you better not scream, okay? Not that anyone's gonna hear you anyway. Thanks. Mm. So what are you gonna do to me? I don't know. I don't know. We're just gonna... I'm gonna wait. Wait until, uh... So he's paid enough. Who? Your dad. My dad doesn't have any money. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I want him to pay the way I did. I want him to suffer. I remember you. From where? You're the lady from my dad's trial. If I were you, I'd be mad at him, too. Can you please take this off? Betty's worrying about you now, huh? Not yet. He's in Turkey. Turkey? Somewhere by Europe. He doesn't even have an address yet. Turkey. there for her child, like I was with mine. How old is Christy? Eight. I got pregnant when I was 16. This tape can be a positive thing for her. You have the time. I've got less than a week. If you put your heart in this and make this tape for your daughter, you will leave here with something you are proud of. I haven't got a heart. Don't you need the paper? I thought you couldn't read. Letter from my daughter. What's it say? I don't know. It's not addressed to me. Read it to me. Dear Darlene, my name is Dinah and I'm Claire's daughter. I'm 15 years old. I want to meet you very much. Not out of curiosity, but I can't explain. I just think we're supposed to meet, and I know it's against the rules for someone my age to go inside the prison, but I heard they make exceptions for people on death row. And I know my folks will say no unless you ask them. It's really important. I hope you will say yes. Sincerely, Dinah Green. So? I'm sorry, darling, I didn't know about this. Okay, you're a good mom. Mrs. Green, Memphis just came in for you to call your husband. Thank you. Your dad got my letters. Back out of town just like that, huh? It means a lot. Oh, man. Can't do anything right. You did a pretty good job of kidnapping. <laughs> well, it scared him a little, that's all. I want him to know what it feels like to turn around and realize his baby's gone. He's not even here to turn around. I must have been out of my mind. I'm going to jail. Maybe not. Don't worry. It'll be okay. Look, the woman wrote a threatening letter. All right. All right. Thanks. I'm all throwing his way over. They went back to the park with Hattie. Oh. Hey, look, I'm gonna go get the truck driver. Uh, no. You stay and wait for the police. I'll go. Okay, so what? My dad. He takes pills 
and then stop and get all down and weak. Start telling what he do. Huh. I could really use a drink right now. What good would that be? Make you feel a little uh, calmer inside. Maybe like somebody, somebody cared about me. Mm. Your son cares about me. He hates me. I let him down. And when he gets out of the hospital, I'm sure they're probably going to take him away from me. If you get caught and go to jail, they'll take him away from you for sure. Well, maybe he'll be better off. He'll be better off with his mom taking care of him. Having no parents allows you. My mom's dead. I guess we've both had pretty tough times, huh? I'm totally lost. You're not lost. My dad can get back on track. Anybody can. They're gonna put me in prison for kidnapping you, you know. I don't know anything about a kidnapping. Gun. My friend Freddie has one just like it. It's Matthews. I never allow a real gun in the house. You can walk from here. Are you sure you're okay? I'm used to adventures. I can handle it. favorite rock. It's from Minnesota. It's pretty, and it feels nice to hold on to. Hello, Nathaniel. Hi. Do you remember me? Do angels follow everybody's family around? Everyone has angels watching over them. Your family see them sometimes. Most people don't. Did you see me in the woods? I thought you were very brave. Sandra committed a serious crime and you survived, so you can tell about it. I'm not going to say anything. Do you think that's right? you got to understand. Half her family died and then she started drinking. I feel sorry for her. I do too, but lying won't help her. Yeah, but it'll keep her out of the worst of trouble. She lost all those people. I know how that feels. She ran away from me. Now you're helping her to run away from the truth. You're running too, Nathaniel, and sooner or later, it will catch up with you. Thanks for the advice. Nice seeing you again. She really thinks she's doing the right thing. Well, that's the way it starts, baby. People stop listening to God. They figure they can decide what's right and wrong for themselves, and it leads to a whole lot of trouble. What are we going to do about him? Oh, don't worry about Nathaniel. He's got a plan, but God's got a better one. And where do we go with Sandra? Well, that depends on where she goes. Well, there's no one's going to listen to me. There's nothing more I can do. Listen, baby, it goes like this. Sometime God sends one angel to plant the seed and another angel to collect the harvest. Now, you've done really good here. You've said all the right things. Now it's time for you to step back and let them hear it loud and clear from me. You're certain she used no force? No. I mean, yes, she didn't. I mean, no. Nathaniel, this is very serious. I know. You want to explain those marks on your wrist? Um, well, we were in the woods. And I was fooling around on a tree and I slipped. Why on earth would you go to the woods with a stranger? She wasn't a stranger. I recognized her from the trial. She was mad at my dad, and I needed to explain some things. And you didn't think to check with us? I had to do it right away. That's what he has to do with all people's stuff. At least that's what you said. So what do we do? I'll talk to the woman. The letters are angry, but they don't mention the boy. Maybe a case of talking to strangers. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of foul play here. At least none that anybody's talking about. All right. Thanks. Well, Detective Winslow.
Marlowe says that Sandra Mill's story winds up in Spaniels, and unless somebody changes that story, there's not much police can do. All we can do is believe him, Russell. Where is he? Upstairs, sleeping. But that woman got away with something, and I think that she did. She'll try it again. Nathaniel might not be so lucky the next time. None of us will be. Did you read those letters? Yes. They were angry and desperate. But there was also a great deal of sadness in them. Did you know her little boy, the one who survived the accident, is in the hospital? No. I read it in the paper. Her son was hurt in a big explosion just yesterday. Well, I feel bad about that, but that's no excuse to hurt another little boy. Russell, something is going on here that we don't understand. Maybe we were not supposed to. But think about it. You were getting ready to go back on the road when Claire sensed the need to be here. Claire visited the prison and saw the angel of death. Nathaniel may actually have been kidnapped, but he was returned to us safely. And Sandra Mills, his boy, he should have been dead. But he survived, miraculously survived. There are times when maybe the only thing we got to go on is not what we know, but what we believe on faith. And maybe this is one of those times. I agree. Haven't we learned by now that it isn't up to us to figure out how everything fits in? It's up to us to deal with it. Well, I can deal with anything, as long as it's with you. There is something else. Well, of course there is. Dinah wants to visit Darlene at the prison. No, huh? No way. Honey, that kind of place would do numbers on the mind of the most mentally healthy person in the world. I am not going to have my daughter risking her mental health just to satisfy some teenage curiosity. You know Dinah better than that, Russell. She is a very sensitive person. Well, that's exactly my point. There is such a thing as evil in this world, and a lot of it lives right out there at that prison. Well, why should Dinah face that any sooner than she has to? I can't argue with you. It does sound like a bad idea, but... What was it that Erasmus just said? Something is happening. People need us, all of us. Isn't that why we went on the road to be there, to be used? I'm not in favor of it, don't back yet. on death row. I guess I can visit you. I guess. How you doing? I don't know. Want to talk about something special? Anything? Confidential? Grandma something there? If you do something bad, because you tried to do something good, does that mean you did something bad? <laughs> Nathaniel, I think if you do something bad, you just did something bad. For no matter what reason. She's not a bad lady. She's kind of sad. Yeah. I gave her my rock. Wow. So when you got from Minnesota? That was very nice of you, Nathaniel. But you know, I think when people are in that much trouble, what they really need is our prayers. You know how to do that, don't you? Yeah. And I'll leave you two alone. gonna let this happen. I didn't either, but she was pretty cool. Protective, but cool. Well, you should be protective. So, uh, what's so important? Well, I have something that I want to tell you. 
And I thought it might make you feel better, feeling that it would be good. I'm really sorry that you're going to die. But do you realize that, in a way, this is kind of a gift? Well, you must be a lot of fun at birthday parties. I know it sounds really weird. I almost died once. I could have died. I was a cat. One minute I was just walking down the sidewalk, and the next minute I realized these could be the last moments of my life. What'd you do? Well, I freaked. I mean, I completely lost it, but then I blacked out. And I started thinking about everyone that I loved and how I would never say goodbye to them, and it seemed almost worse than that. Well, afterwards, I wrote this poem, and I thought it might help you right now. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, I would. Okay. Somewhere outside my body, I am screaming. Somewhere in the night, I am fighting for my life. But here, down in my heart, and deep in my soul, my voice calls you to me, Mama. My mind remembers all the times you held me when I cried and sang to me when I was afraid of the dark. Somewhere out there is evil, and now I must face it. But before I go, I want to say I love you. And I wish I had told you so before I left today. That's really good. Thanks. Look, I know I'm just a kid. And maybe this has already occurred to you, but you may be the only person alive right now that knows the exact day and hour that you're going to die. You may not think you have any time left. But you have more time than most people ever get to say goodbye or whatever it is you have to say. I just wish that I could give my little girl something more than reading a little storybook out loud. The idea is to leave something of yourself behind for your daughter to remember you by. It doesn't have to be a story. You can make a tape of a song, of a, of a letter, or a poem. I'm not exactly a poet. My mom could help. I think you would be a very good poet, darling. to change the way things are, but it can't be changed. That's all right now. I think it sounds more like a letter than a poem. Well, it's different. Well, a poem is what you feel rather than what you think. Mama calls it the language of the heart. I don't even know what that means. That means you think of Christy and you see how that makes you feel. It makes me happy. It makes me sad. It makes me want to hold her and never let go. Miss Green, you wanted in the visiting room. What for? I don't know. I was just told to come and get you. I'm sorry, darling. Let's go, Dinah. I want to say. Don't worry, Claire. If she stays with me, believe it or not. Please, Donna. I'll be right back. Can I ask you a question? 
sister. Why did he kill that man? I don't know. I, I was loaded and looking for more, and I guess he just got in the way of me and my next fix. I didn't even know what I was doing. See, that's what happens when you help you do anything, anything for drugs, including throwing away somebody else's life. Or your life. And the little girl. Does Christy live with your family now? No, and that wouldn't be good for her. She has a foster family in California. They're good to her. Isn't there anyone here to say goodbye? My little girl's the only one I care about. And I love her too much to put her through that. I'm her mother, for heaven's sakes. She won't even see me. I'm sorry, but I don't know how I can help you. I'm only her tutor. You're the only one she'll talk to. She won't speak to me. The death penalty is wrong, Mrs. Crane. That may be true, Mr. Guthrie. But Darlene seems reconciled to dying. How can anybody be reconciled to dying? Darlene's transformed herself, become a model prisoner. We've got attorneys prepared to file appeals. We'd get a stay, possibly a reduced sentence. You can't possibly have any objections to that. Of course not. But it's not my objections to count. All we want you to do is talk to her. Tell her that she's got a real good chance of living. No matter what she decides, ask her to see me. I wasn't much of a mother to her before. My mother's about to turn me into a business. Tell my story the tabloids on. Talk to forget it. Is that why you stopped seeing her? I stopped seeing her because she's an alcoholic who beat the tar out of me every chance she got. But they say they have lawyers that can reduce your sentence. Don't you think I know that? I don't want to die, Claire. I'm scared. But I also don't want the spectacle. I don't want it for Christy. But you'd live for her. I don't see it that way. I want her to be free of all of this. Everything about me, in the paper or on TV, cuts into her. And I have hurt her enough. And if I'm going to do one thing with my life, it's going to be set her free of me. But what about your mother? What about her? Isn't it time to let go of those old feelings? When I was six years old, my mother went on a bender for five days. I sat in my filth, thinking I was going to die alone. I will never forgive her. Hey. How'd it go? Uh, partly good. Partly bad. How about you? Oh, I had great parts. This part, for instance. Then we can dress all over town. Find a town that can junk shop. Oh, finally, you both do. I have something to show you. And that would be. I don't want you to get mad at her or anything. She's really hurting inside. And she drinks a lot and she's not really responsible for her own actions. Nathaniel. Okay. Miss Mills kind of made me go with her yesterday. How? Oh, kind of. Kind of had a gun. It was a toy one. How could you lie about something like that? I thought I was doing the right thing. Calling the police. You get a lot of trouble, isn't it? I think you should be thinking about how much trouble you're in right now. I wish she could know. What do I want her to know? I think you know what you want to say. And all you have to do is just say it. It's hard. I wish I could tell you how sorry I am that I can't be a part of your life. 
You were the best part of my... Your daughter is going to treasure that. You really think so? And you'll make sure that Christy gets that, right? I will make sure she gets it. <sighs> um, look, I'm, I'm not really that good at this kind of stuff, but um, I want to thank you. Look, uh, I, I don't want you to be there tomorrow night. I gotta do the swimming from here on. So, um, I think that we should say our goodbyes right now, okay? Okay. All right. You were a better family to me in one week than she was my entire life. like that back, please. I'm not in the habit of helping people hurt themselves. Oh, I could really use a drink right now. Please. You know, some people say that sooner or later an alcoholic is going to hit bottom. I don't believe that. You don't hit bottom. You hit God. Just give it to me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> now you stop that. And you sit down right here. Now. And you stop it. a little okay a lot but since I, I i lost half my family i i needed to drink in order to sleep you see it, and it just got out of hand that's all that's a very interesting explanation sandra but it's not true and you don't need another drink what you need is a change you need to change your mind and change your life, and you need God to help you do it right here and right now. And how many angels is it going to take for you to talk to him? The other, the other angel, Monica, was real? She was real, and you were drunk. And you just missed meeting another one. His name is Andrew. Love him, the 
the choice to listen to him or the choice to drive recklessly and endanger the lives of other people, which is exactly what happened last year. Joe Green, Joe Green had that choice. He made that choice that day, that's for sure. And, and, and where is he now? They let him out. God's judgment and man's judgment are different. Joe paid society's price, and the rest of it is between him and God. However, let me tell you this. Joseph Green has learned something that you need to learn. That God will show you more mercy than you show yourself. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that you blame God. You blame Joseph Green. But there's somebody else that you blame most isn't there. Sandra Mills. I know exactly who you are. I've already told the police I want you to stay as far away from this family as is humanly possible. I saw an angel. Said he'd listen if I told you that. Come on in. I never meant to hurt anyone. I, uh, I'm still making excuses. I let everyone think that I started drinking because my family was killed. But, um, <clears throat> the truth is I, uh, started drinking long before that. I drank alone. Um, and that day I, uh, I made my husband take out the boys because, uh, he was to hide my vodka bottle. <clears throat> and I don't call it. And I want to apologize to Nathaniel Henry, too, and to the whole family. I know what your brother did was an accident. It was a stupid accident, but it was an accident. And um, if it means anything to you at all, I've already forgiven it. I've given your brother for the death of my husband and my son. Miss Mills, uh -huh. mm. means everything. Tomorrow on Mysterious Ways, Declan is haunted by an old friend. The family seems to have gotten a new lease on life. It's been quite a day. Not over yet. The time's the execution. Midnight. Dinah, aren't you going to eat anything? <laughs> I never thought it'd be this hard. A woman murdered somebody. I know. 
But nobody should have to die without saying goodbye to the people that they love. Didn't she write that beautiful poem to her daughter? Yeah, she did. But she won't forgive her own mother. Sometimes forgiving someone seems impossible. Sandra forgave Uncle Joe, and that was impossible. Look how it's changed all of us. Think of how it's changed her. She can move on now. She can change her life. Darling doesn't have much life left to change. Shut up, Joe. Take me back, Mama, please. Even if it only changes her for an hour. So, forgiveness might not change your mom, but it will change you. Just like it did Sandra. I know it will. Anyway. That's why I had to come back and try just one more time. I think that we were all supposed to meet, but we should all find forgiveness. If I told you that I met the angel of death yesterday and he said the same thing, would you laugh at me? No. There are a lot of things in this world I don't understand, darling. Things that seem incredible or impossible. But I do believe God uses angels. And children. And every willing soul in between. To bring healing and forgiveness to this world. So, let's get to work. You couldn't hear me. You weren't there. When I laughed, you didn't get me. You turned away. When I needed to be held, you just looked at me. I didn't get it then, but I understand it now. You had your problems and I had mine. And we faced them in different ways. But I want you to know, whatever else has happened, you're still my mother. And I'm still your daughter, which makes us a family. And families forgive each other. I forgive you, Mom. It's hard to say goodbye, but it's time to move on. There's a lot waiting for you out there, so don't look back. But just think of me sometimes. When the night gets cold, or the day gets long, and it doesn't seem like you'll ever get where you're going. And remember, even though the road is 
place taking us to different places now.